everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be making a fun and hopefully pretty quick and easy project and it is a thrift upcycling project too. So very sustainable, love that, and it makes it a lot easier. So what we're going to be doing today, if you couldn't tell by the thumbnail or the title, is making a petticoat. And specifically, we are making a petticoat out of a thrifted, I think this is a bed skirt, I'm pretty sure, Bed skirts make really wonderful petticoats, particularly if you can find ones that have ruffles on them. You can also do this with valances. I was honestly confused at first if this was potentially a valance because it has this weird thick section up here that I don't tend to see on bed skirts that's like all folded over and looks like it could have curtains running through it. But this would be, I feel like, a pretty weird curtain. So I think this is a bed skirt. I've got two of them here so that is the perfect amount. If you have like a king size bed skirt that has the ruffle that goes all the way around you can honestly make like a petticoat and a half out of that. I actually have an 1830s petticoat and a 19 teens princess slip that both have the same like ruffle from a ruffled king size bed skirt. So be on the lookout when you are thrifting because these things are gold because it means that you don't have to do any ruffling, you don't have to do any hemming. This one even has lace trim, which is really fun, like this crocheted lace trim. So yeah, this is gonna be nice and easy. We're basically just going to take these and cut off the ruffle that is oddly on the side here because we don't need that and sew them together gather the top, put it on a waistband, we got a petticoat. Before we go into sewing mode though, let's go over to sponsor Rebecca for a little word about today's sponsor, Cozy Earth. Cozy Earth is a premium bedding and loungewear company and they're the best source for high quality bamboo linens. They kindly sent me this linen sheet set, which is made of 30% linen and 70% viscose made from bamboo, which means it is extremely sustainable. The sheets are super soft, and because of the linen and the bamboo, they're also temperature regulating, so they'll keep me nice and cool this summer. I also love that they came in this nice zipper top canvas tote bag. Cozy Earth also has super soft and comfy loungewear, and right now, if you use my code REBECCA35, you'll get 35% off your purchase. Or you can use the link down in the description below, and the discount will be automatically applied to your purchase. Thank you so much to Cozy Earth for sponsoring this video. And now back to ruffles. So I want to preserve this weird side ruffle bit because I have used this sort of thing before from other bed skirts for other projects. So who knows what this might come in handy for. Maybe it can be used to help fill out a train or like as a dust ruffle, etc. So we are going to cut this off to a point where it can be sewn to something else, like cutting the base fabric as opposed to just removing the ruffle. Now this one, unfortunately, the ruffle is already coming off at the end. So we will have to fix that whenever we go to actually use it for something else but as long as we cut up here I recommend at least about an inch away from the ruffle because that'll give you just that little bit and then also like a seam allowance so at least an inch maybe even an inch and a half away from the ruffle we're just going to cut that off and we are going to kind of like ease out the area down here because as you can see the ruffle really curves around the side and we obviously want all of the ruffle that hangs down to be incorporated into our petticoat so really should be about that like inch inch and a half from the connection point which is right here that cutting it off will give us the straight ruffle hanging down this way now over on the other end of this part of the petticoat or bed skirt or whatever we have a pretty deep like pocket fold situation going on here that we just really don't need. That's excess fabric that we don't need because there isn't a ruffle to go along with it. That said, this ruffle also has a pretty deep fold right here. So I am actually going to pick out this fold, open that up, and that's going to give me just a little bit more ruffle slash also seam allowance to join to the other piece. So I will probably wind up re-sewing just a little bit of ruffle right here. And then otherwise I am going to cut off all of that excess up here. We don't need that. And we're going to get rid of it. 
The petticoat pieces are now all ready to be serged along the top edge and the side edges. And in the meantime, I have also gone and taken that excess bit that we cut off and I am making the waistband out of it. So I cut a piece that was four inches wide. Actually, I ripped it because this fabric rips really nicely on the grain, but it is four inches wide and it was the length of this piece, which was not quite long enough for my waistband. So I also cut a little bit extra. That's why this piece now looks so funny, but I am going to serge these joints them together and that will be ready to make the waistband out of. Now that our edges are serged we are going to put our two big pieces right sides together and sew our side seams taking care to leave on one side about nine or so inches at the top as that is going to be our opening for the waistband. You do also want to make sure that you match up where your ruffles are so that your ruffles actually meet nicely together. So now that we have our sides sewn together and then the seams pressed open, it is time to be able to gather the top of this. This is kind of where you have to decide what kind of petticoat are you actually making. Obviously we have two straight panels, but honestly that can make up a whole lot of different petticoats. So frankly already at this point I did decide to make a Victorian petticoat as opposed to an 18th century petticoat. There is absolutely nothing to say that you cannot make an 18th century petticoat in this method as well. The only difference up to this point would have been I would not have wanted to close up this side seam all the way to the top. I would have wanted to leave it open just like the other because then you have access to both of your pocket slits. The one thing about making this an 18th century petticoat though as opposed to like a Victorian one is the fact that if you're wearing this over pocket hoops you are going to see the hem like curve up because this already has the hem or of course you balance it at the waist and you take some of that excess out of the waist here leaving it to be longer here than it is here which was another method that they would have used and for 18th century petticoat then you would really just like pleat this up to two tapes so that you could tie the tapes around your waist but we're looking at a victorian petticoat for this so Frankly, like if you wanted to make this a bustle petticoat, you could put a whole lot of the gathers, like most of the gathers, to the back as opposed to to the front. And then you would pretty much wind up with a bustle petticoat. Now again, just like with 18th century, I would suggest that you would balance the length of the front by shortening it at the waist so you would pull up the front piece and leave the back to be its full length and that would give you a hem that's relatively even all the way around because of course you can balance things you can balance like the length of something at the waist as opposed to the hem personally I generally prefer to do it at the hem just because I find that easier but actually historically speaking especially in the 18th century they balance things at the waist more than they did at the hem. So then the other option for this, which honestly is what I'm going to go with, is just to make this kind of like a mid-century Victorian petticoat, something that would work well for like, honestly, 1830s even, 1840s, 1850s, 1860s. In other words, it's basically the same amount of fullness relatively all the way around. So the way that I'm going to do that to make it just way easier on me is just to run my gathering stitches on the machine both sides pull it up I'm probably going to distribute a little bit less fullness right here at the front than I will all of the rest of the way around but otherwise that's going to be relatively even and it also just makes for kind of an easier petticoat and once that gathering has been pulled up and it's ready to attach to the waistband I don't think I mentioned it but I cut this waistband so that it's actually five inches longer than my waist and what that does is that it allows me a one inch worth of seam allowance you absolutely need that but also I make my waistbands in the theatrical method because I learned like in a costume shop and what that means is that you have an overlap and you have like a catch hook in the back and then you have your main hooks here so basically you're gonna have a three inch overlap kind of that's what I do a standard three inch overlap right here end of the skirt like on the outside is here and you're gonna have two hooks and two bars here and then this part right here the skirt actually ends about one inch past here I hope you're getting all of this visual that I'm doing with my hands but basically 
your skirt is going to overlap, the actual skirt material is going to overlap by about an inch right here, and then two additional inches are going to continue on this way, just the waistband alone, like a little tab sticking out, and at the end of that you're going to get one hook on the interior and then the bar on the exterior. So that way, like, even if one of your hooks fails, you still have a bunch of other hooks holding up your skirt. And I found, especially in the theatrical sense, but honestly, even when I'm doing historical costuming, that that is very necessary because you never know when threads are going to snap on a bar. It happens all the time. It's always the bars. And I was replacing a bunch during Titanic. And yeah, so you want to have that backup. And that's why you have the three hook system like that, putting everything together. So that is my method for putting waistbands on. And basically once I have that gathered up again, it's just going to be like right sides together with the waistband. So you are going to want to mark a half inch on one side and two and a half inches on the other side. So that you know, like where the skirt is actually going to attach to. And then I will get into showing you the other bits of the waistband once we get there. But yeah, right sides together. Just make sure you make those marks. Oh, by the way, before you actually gather this, I do recommend that at the very least you mark your center. You may also actually want to divide each of your panels, since these are pretty big panels, into quarters and then mark equal marks on the waistband so that you can actually distribute your gathers evenly. Now that the waistband has been attached right sides together like that, you can go ahead and press this seam. I tend to not really press it. Sometimes I'll steam it just to kind of get that to lay nice and flat, but I don't want to press the gathers in and like smush them, so that's why I don't tend to press it. What I do press, however, is this other edge right here. So I actually did already take a couple of other steps because I went and I made the tab and I also closed off the other end. So all that happens here is that this was right sides together and you sew here and here and then turn that right sides out after you clip the corners. And then on on the other side here it is pretty similar except that it's not a tab you literally just sew right sides together at the end and then flip that and then I press all of that and now what's going to happen is now that this is pressed this pressed edge right here is going to be pinned down so that it just covers the stitch line that was made down in here right there so it's gonna just cover that and pinned in place and then I flip it over and stitch in the ditch which means right along this seam right here I stitch in the ditch there and hopefully it will catch all of it on the other side as well and then other than hooks and eyes at the waist our petticoat will be done this is what the waistband looks like now I have pressed the edge here and now I am putting on the hooks and bars I use the wide skirt hooks for this sort of thing and I tend to buy them in bulk as you can see to be honest I don't remember where I got those from but it wasn't like Joann's and what I'm doing here is I am actually making this so that this can be worn both with and without a corset so I made the largest waist measurement to be without a corset that's going to be where these bars go here and then it can be a little bit smaller I just looked at another skirt that I had where I have this sort of setup um, so I moved these down one and three eighths inches for where there's a corset I'm hoping that that's right frankly in the other one it's between a 19 teens corset and a an Edwardian corset but hopefully that will work because I do feel like I have a more than one and three eighths introduction but close enough and then same thing over here and then I will put the hooks right here and a return hook right here. And here is the finished petticoat. So that was so super super easy and you can see just how nice and full it is especially with that ruffle down at the bottom. This is going to work really really great for rehearsals as well. I love that it's actually going to be nice and long because my other petticoats are actually a little bit too short to use as a rehearsal skirt and frankly you could use this even just like as a skirt if you want to instead of just a petticoat. So yeah I really really love how this turned out and for a super quick and super inexpensive project I think this was great. So yeah, I think this is going to be a wonderful addition to my costuming wardrobe and honestly to my theatrical wardrobe because frankly I am probably going to be using this as a rehearsal skirt for like period shows that I'm in honestly just as much if not more than I use it as a petticoat just because like when I do a show 
you use it repeatedly. You use that like at every single rehearsal. And in the past, I haven't really had a good rehearsal skirt. Most of mine have been kind of too short to be functional. You want to be able to practice with something that you then have to like take into account that you're not going to trip over basically when you get into your actual costume. So that's why I am absolutely loving this, but I am definitely going to be using this as a petticoat as well. I know that it does look quite long on me right now, but keep in mind that this is the sort of thing that is going to go over either like a small hoop skirt or like a corded petticoat, something like that. So it is going to give it a little bit uh, less length overall because it's going to go over more width, if that makes sense. And then when I'm using it for the theatrical sense, I'm not going to be wearing it over those. So it'll be the good length for theatrical as well. So yeah, overall, I am so, so pleased with this. It was such a nice, quick, easy project. I love when I can find this sort of really nice ruffled bed skirt at a thrift store. I mean, I can't remember exactly how much I spent on this, but I want to say it was $5. So $5 to petticoat, not bad. And I hardly had to do any of the real work myself. And of course, you could make this thing even easier, honestly, if you were to put in like a drawstring instead of a fitted waistband. And if you do need it shorter, obviously you just cut off some of the length at the top, but I kind of just lucked out that this bed skirt happened to be like the exact length that I needed for a petticoat. So hopefully you enjoyed this super quick and easy project video. If you liked this video, please go ahead and click the thumbs up icon. And if you'd like to see more videos like this from me, please go ahead and click subscribe and the little bell icon to be notified every time I post a new video. I do post videos here on YouTube at least once a week with my sewing vlogs coming out on Tuesdays and other costuming content out on Saturdays, but I post every day over on my Instagram. So please go follow me on Instagram. That's at Lady Rebecca Fashions. And if you'd like to help support all of the work that I do on this channel, I do have a link to my Patreon and my Ko-fi down in the description below, or you can send me a super thanks right here on YouTube. I'd also like to give a special shout out to my Edwardian level patrons, Sharon, Mirage, Laura, Jean, and Janelle. And also again, a huge thank you to Cozy Earth for sponsoring this video. You can check them out down in the description below. Thank you so, so much for joining me today. I hope you all have a wonderful week and I will see you very soon in my next video. Happy sewing!